Good evening, ladies and gents. Pleasure to have you here on this interesting day where USD JPY is flirting with the 150. NASDAQ easing off a little bit. Anyway, fewer attendees this time, but that indicates to me that if you're here on this webinar after coming to the first webinar, you're one of the few who's probably done some of the tasks, some of those day-to-day -day challenges that we had and you're halfway through the challenge. That's the separator. Doesn't necessarily mean that that's exactly what you ought to do, but the fact that you're here, uh, credit to you. All right, so let's get straight on with this. Uh, how we normally operate is we'll run through the con topics of the webinar, the contents, and at the end, some time for Q&A. There's a section somewhere on your screen where you can add any questions you may have. I'll get to those at the end. All right, we know the score, guys. The disclaimer, there's a risk to this. It's a risky business. You're training leverage uh, products, spread bet CFDs are complex, high risk of losing money. There's, there's potential big upside, there's potential big downside. I think as long as you're aware of that, then we can play the game and uh, you know do our very, very best to make sure we're on the right side of that deal. Okay, so 20-day trading reboot, part two. Many of you have done part one. In fact, thank you for your messages. Some of you were struggling with certain parts, like the selfie video was maybe challenging, the uh, reading. Um, you were doing some bits and others. Listen, the other day, right? If you've done all of it, great, absolutely perfect. If you've done some of it, that's a head start. That's just getting getting the ball rolling. The idea isn't that you know, do every single little thing. It's, it's great if you do, but if you've just picked and choose bits and you're kind of going to come back to it, then it's it's just moving the needle forward a little bit or moving, taking one step forward, and then it's building that momentum. Like I said, you know, last two or two weeks ago. It's, it's getting that momentum going, building the momentum so we can get some momentum in Q4, roll through to the end of the year, and then we can start the year strong and put a good year on. And it's just thinking ahead and thinking clearly. So, again, as we, recover, as we cover days 11 to 20 today, you know, if you stick to them, great. If you do some of it, great. You know, it's picking out bits that work for you. And at the very end, we'll talk about how we can maybe move this forward and have it as a regular process to adjust and adapt as we go on. Okay, I kept Mark on, Michael Marcus's quote up there. It's not enough to be right. You must also be disciplined. So true. You can be perfectly right, but if you're not sticking to the trade, not holding the trade, you're going to be out. So worth considering. Okay, so uh, I gave you a copy of my discipline tracker last time, tradersmastermind.com forward slash discipline hyphen tracker. It's there. It's yours. Take it. Download it. The link will copy it straight to your Google uh account g drive account what they call it these days g sheets account google account you can use a free account it's fine and then you can kind of adjust and track your habits as you move on and i've amended it slightly so if you go again you probably get a slight update it's very minor it's not if you download it very beginning very very minor updates i'll probably do some more updates some bigger updates to it um uh, in due course, but it's very, very handy for keeping track of what you're doing, very, very handy for getting a good streak, very, very handy for at least seeing what you're supposed to be doing. Have it up on your screen, bang, a little slither there, like this one's supposed to be doing today. Let me follow what I'm you know, trying to do to help me build those good habits and remove the bad habits. Okay, so reminder, I always like to say I don't have all the answers, even though I've been training for 20 plus years, um, I definitely don't have all the answers. I'm here to share my knowledge and experience and also some of the other experience and observations that I have from other traders that I see, experienced traders, newer traders, developing traders. So I try, to take, try and take all of this and distill it down into something to present to you. And then you go, ah, you know what, that's useful. I'll run with that or not so interested in that. That's the way that I like to operate. So I'm definitely not here to say you must do this, but I try to take stuff that I feel is valuable, take stuff that I've seen mistakes, share all this stuff with you. So I'm really thinking in a reasonably good position uh, to do that. So I share the ideas and thoughts as always, do your analysis, research, and homework. There's nothing, there's no substitute for you know, just, just getting your teeth stuck into something, going down a rabbit hole, visiting uh, all the different topics and exploring and coming up with your own ideas. Things take time, of course. Implement a change, stick to it, see how you got on with it. I have to say the biggest thing that I see with traders, and you know, this is myself 15 years ago, or 16, 17 years ago, whatever it was, just trying something and then it's not working. No, it's not working and expecting it to work instantly on that Monday or that Tuesday. It doesn't happen like that, does it? It's just sticking to it and then auditing the performance. We're going to talk about more of that in a moment in the next couple of slides. 
observe your results, make course corrections, observe your results, make course corrections, and don't give up. And actually, I saw a tweet, and I've talked about this in through different analogies. I saw a tweet, and uh, I've forgotten where it's come from now, but um, he basically said, listen, if you're running a restaurant and you had a poor week, would you throw everything away? Would you just throw your business model away and say, oh, I'm just not going to do burgers anymore. I'm going to suddenly do curry or I'm going to do chai. You wouldn't. You'd be like, okay, what, what went wrong? Was there anything I could do? Was it just the, the conditions? Was it this? Was it that? Same with trading, right? It's very easy to just throw everything away because it's not working for one week or for one trade or for one day. But actual fact is putting the reps in, put the consistency in and finding that formula that works over time. Okay, so just a reminder, you can find me at tradersmastermind.com. Many of you already know that. I send out a free daily email. Subscribers going through the roof. Thank you so much for sharing that and spreading the word. You guys seem to enjoy it. Um, and I can I, I enjoy writing it. So there's a mixture of stuff there. We talk about strategy sometimes. We talk about little just mo sometimes I think that last week I just shared a really good motivational video I found, and that was really popular. You, you love that. Traders love that. I like it. So I share things as important. I think it's valuable. How to think. Uh, mental models, just just stuff. If you're into trading, you're serious about trading, it's, it's worth getting on there. Free of charge, goes out every day, 7.30. I've also uploaded all the webinars. Well, we're starting to upload all the webinars to the webinar section, uh, all the recordings of the webinars, should I say, the prior ones I've done. So if it's something that takes your fancy, you can see uh, a recording of that on the website. And there's also more stuff on there that you can check out. Let's get straight to it. Are we for time? We're good. Right. Accused of waffling a little bit at the beginning. I don't think so now. I think we're five minutes in and we're good. So we're getting right into the meat of it. Uh, okay, reminder. What did we do last week? If you're, if you're new here, didn't see last week's, you can go onto the website, tradersmastermind.com forward slash webinars. We'll look on the top right and check that out. You don't really need to have seen it. It makes sense because it's this part, this day 11 to 20. What we're really doing is we're having a 20-day reboot. Trade 20-day challenge. A lot of people have been calling it a challenge. Maybe that would be a better word for it. But it's really... Um, something just to make you think differently. And as I mentioned, I think it was on a call to some, some of the members in Traders Mastermind, and I'm reading this book at the moment, and you know, books are there to really inspire you and make you think and light a fire in your mind. So hopefully this is what I'm trying to do with these webinars is not say, hey, this is exactly how you should do things, go and do this because it's worked for me, I've seen it. So like, okay, no, it's to ignite something in your mind, spark a little fire that goes off and you go, ah, yeah, that might work, I'll grab that, I'll do this, I'll do that. And if that helps you move forward, then that, you know, I've, I've done my job and I'm happy and you're happy. And that's how every trader, every trader grows. We share stuff, we grow, learn a little bit, share stuff a bit, move forward. That's the way we go. So, okay, as a reminder, last time, goals, talked about goals, writing down your goals, your mind, movie, visualization, your environment and tools, squaring that off, your market's time frame and risk, sorting that out, methodology, strategy definition. Uh, that was kind of fun because some of you came up with some interesting strategy names. Uh, trade setup library, that's recording screenshots of all your trade setups, pre and post trade ideas, finding a trading buddy, and new strategy exploration, which is also kind of a fun one to do. And then the daily task, get you five pages of a book, could be the same book, could be different books, write down your goals, visualize for five, mark up your charts, record a selfie. Some of you did all of those, some of you did some of those, that's fine. You know, those were there, optional, be great if you did all of them, I think you find value, don't take long, but if you did some of them, and that's good. And actually, as we go move forward, we're going to find out you know, potentially how you prune and adjust it to suit you and your trading and your goals and where you want to head as a trader. Okay, so uh, again, if you want to go and dig in deep into that, then you can do it. I don't want to waste time going over old ground. You'll hear fresh new stuff. So we are on day 11. Stops audit. So I wanted to spend 30. And, and by the way, these are all, you know, these are carefully considered things and tasks to do because you know, they, they will help you improve. You know, we're not going to say, oh, you're going to be, you know, in a seventh big club by the end of the week, I any mean, nonsense like that. We're not going to say, say that. We're here to say, listen, this this will help you improve your trading, the trader you are, and grow. So day 11, stops audit. Spent 30 minutes just focusing on stop performance, just the stops. So reviewing our stops. Are they too tight, too wide, trailing? Do you run to break even too soon? What can you do to improve them? So the way that I, why I really like this, guys, is I like to look at things through a different lens each time. So very often we go and review our trades, right? We talked about trade reviewing, journaling, all this kind of process. Um, and we've got a chart, maybe you've marked up the chart. Great, that's a, that's a good habit to get into. But you kind of look at it and there's loads of stuff to look at. The actual price action of the chart, your entry, your size, your profitability on the trade, your exit, did you get stopped? Did you do this, do that? There's so much stuff. So what I like to do is when I'm reviewing trades or a trade, Put a, different, put a different pair of glasses on, so to speak, and say, right, 
I'm auditing my stops only now. For 30 minutes, I just wanna look at my stops. Am I generally too tight? Am I too wide? You know, am I, am I, am I literally risking way more than I need to? And it's very obvious in the first five minutes that this is a losing trade. And actually, there's an extra parameter I can have that if it goes against me in the first five minutes, I can probably cut it. Something like that. There's always a little theme. I, honestly, I, I find this so often. There's a little theme, a thread. You just gotta grab it and just kind of pull it out and go, oh, okay, that's interesting. You know, maybe if I just wait for one more leg before I move to break even. Maybe if I don't activate a trailer until I'm above and beyond this pattern. Something's always something normally. I told a, I told a story many times. You're probably bored if you've heard this one before, but I used to focus just on the Dow, just on the Dow. This would be 10, 10 years ago or so, maybe more. And I had this specific strategy, very short-term, almost scalping strategy. And it, I looked at the strategy, ordered the strategy, and I'd lost money on the strategy. I was like, this feels like such a good strategy. Why am I losing money on the strategy? And I had a fixed stop. And actually, I went back and reviewed. And if I just widened my stop by a smidge, it would have changed the profitability. And the reason that sticks with me so much it was such a turning point for me, reviewing the trades, reviewing what I'd done, and actually realizing that it was just a small adjustment. And yeah, you know, in the scheme of things, it, you know, you think, oh, it's just one strategy, one market, one point in time in your trading journey. But actually, you know, then realizing, whoa, a slight movement, a two point adjustment, and that's because the volatility at time was much lower. A two point adjustment, two point widening makes that into profitable strategy. Went ahead, did that. The next couple of weeks, it gave me confidence. It gave me momentum. It made me move forward a little bit. So auditing your stops, very, very, very valuable thing to do on day 11. And by the way, did I mention this? Probably didn't. but you can do these in order, but any day you like. So if you're trading or not trading the next day, then you can do it or you can choose to do it whenever. Just don't skip to day 13 and back to 11 because there's a certain order that goes with it. So if you're kind of just going through it again now, you're still at day five, that's fine. You get all the data for to what you're going to do for 11 to 20. Just carry on and go six, seven, eight, nine. You get the idea. All right. Next lens, bonk, entry audits. So we've done our stops. We've checked our stop audit. Now we look at it just from a perspective of our entry. We get a chart, look at it, say, right, what are my entries like? Am I a little bit early? Am I a little bit late? Am I too aggressive? What's good about it? What's bad about it? How can I improve? That lens, 30 minutes, it's a game changer of being able to think just with that in mind. And this all comes back from, we know human beings can do amazing things when we're focused. So trading super, super tough. So the way to, to be amazing, I believe, is to really chunk it off into things and put your full energy into one lever that needs to be moved. Full energy into stops. How can I be better at stops? The best at stops. Full energy into the strategy. Full energy into entry. And this allows you to see things you wouldn't do if you were just looking at it with a holistic view and look at the whole trade and the price action, all this kind of structure. So, you know, are you a bit aggressive with your entry? In other words, are you, do you see it at a level and you, you kind of ur, ur, urge, eager to buy the, or urgency, should I say, um, as an urgency, as an eagerness, whatever you want to do at that level. You see it, hits it, you take it. Do you want to wait for one more little little play? What I mean by this is very often we get in this play of markets coming back to a level, key level. Um, it pauses, but it's not really a trigger candle. And then it drifts through, drifts through, spikes back up, maybe comes back to test that level, comes back, wicks through that low, and then bids. That might be the last little piece of the puzzle you need to wait for. So it's just these little things or saying, what about my entry? Because very often, you and I both know this, very often you can have a great trade, but the entry is just naff. It just doesn't work out. You're too soon, you get stopped, it rips you away. It's frustrating, it's annoying. You called it, you wait for the level, you hit the you hit the button, you hit the trade, order went through, and what happened? You got stopped, and then it went your way. That's frustrating. So if it's happening too soon, or if it's happening regularly, should I say, then you can just say, right, how can I adjust and adapt? And, you know, some people might push back at me and say, well, the sample size is very small. And I might say, yes, okay, I, I accept that. However, you know, I'm a discretionary trader. I do use data to kind of support some of my ideas and themes, but I'm not like a vigorous back test. I'm not these guys who goes and tests a massive amount of data and puts a system into that. I like to put some data into the mix, but eyeball is important. And also, you know, structure changes from, I feel like we get pockets of structures very, very similar. Like, for example, let's digress slightly. Example, NASDAQ, right? I'm looking here. 615, we turned, we've turned down our last week. 615, 610, 620, 6 p.m. Today, 5 p.m., we turn lower. It's a sample size of what? Five. 
but already that's telling me something there's already we've had a 6 p.m turn or 6 to 6 15 turn to the downside regularly like clockwork for the past four days now it's rolling down at five. Oh, that's interesting does that change structure? Does that mean that the sellers are a bit more eager? Are we going to close at lows? Are we going to have a big heavy down day? Are we going to bounce off that? Is that getting the sellers out of the way first? You know, it's, it's just thinking clearly about this type of stuff. So anyway, I'm digressing. I'm going off piste. I do that from time to time. Okay, what's bad? What's good? How can you improve? Let's move to day 13. This is a lucky day for you. It's not unlucky. Your exit audit. So this is when you're taking profits. So stops are when you're getting stopped out. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of kind of crossover there. Uh, with perhaps trading stops, but let's, let's just categorize that for now. Spend 30 minutes focusing on your profitable trade exits. Too early, too late, what's good, what bad, what can you do to improve? And a little trick that I like to, to, to do is to hypothesize. So sometimes it's quite difficult and challenging to say, well, well how can I improve? I'm looking at one chart. Well, we are obviously in that chart, genius. I would have held it. Or well, that chart would have come out. I get that. You know, you can have that benefit of hindsight and you can use it too much to your advantage. So let's kind of think a little bit more strategically and say, hey, if I'd, if I'd entered or exited five, just five minutes later on each trade, how would that have affected performance last week? If I just held all my trades for another five minutes, that's a good little experiment to do. It doesn't take a lot to work out. You know, you can do it manually very, very easily. Just looking at a five minute chart. What's the next five minute chart? Bang. Uh, what would the close of that next five minute bar be? Just stuff like that. Hypothesize. And then you go, hmm, okay. Well, actually, if I had held for five minutes and I were in a much better position, yes, it's a small sample size, but but that might open the door to you exploring holding trades a little bit longer. And you go, hey, let me go down that rabbit hole. Let me pull on that thread a little bit of holding trades a little bit longer. And maybe you decide, actually, I'm going to hold for just five more minutes. I'm going to hold for the close of that 15 minute bar. I'm going to hold for the, to the top of the hour, bottom of the hour, whatever it is, because I know that actually historically, if I just held a little bit, I seem to get on the end of stuff, but I seem to get shaken out too quickly. Let me just hold stuff. So just, you just grabbing these little threads and, and you, and you and I both know this, that sometimes you're improving an edge very, very slightly is the difference between green week, red week. And if you can compound this with your stops, with your exits, uh, with your entries, then this kind of little bit of improvement each day after your 20 days, 40 days, whatever it may be, you see, you'll see a big improvement and, and you can see how that can affect the, and the And the beauty of this and why I kind of really like talking about this so much is we're not talking about new strategies, new ideas, new stuff. We're talking about what you already do. So whatever strategy you deploy, whether you're trading the opening range breakout, whether you're trading a traditional breakout, whether you're trading a mean revert, whatever it may be, I've been standing for ages talking about strategies, it doesn't matter. We're auditing what you have done. So that's fact. That's the trade you've executed. And then the logic says, right, if I tweaked and adjusted this by this amount, that amount, that amount, then the fact is that's where I will be. We're not talking about theory, we're not talking about hindsight, we're talking about actual stuff that you've done, which is why I like so much auditing performance like this and why I cover it in such detail today. Okay, let's move on. Uh, this is a good one as well. So day 14, big opportunity prep. What do I mean by this? So I think I did a podcast uh, titled, what's your million dollar trade or something like that. And the idea of that was really to, um, you know, the million dollars was kind of just this, this there to make you think. Doesn't have to be that that number. And I recognize that, you know, we've got different different account sizes and that the monetary amounts irrelevant. But what's your big opportunity trade? How would you prepare? What do you consider a big opportunity? So this isn't something that's always going to come up, right? And it's not something that maybe is ever going to come up. But if it does, you're prepared for it. You know how to trade it. And what it also does is it keeps you very, very um, focused and it makes you feel prepared and confident. So an example would be, okay, what would I do if I if we had breaking news, um, some really negative news about the global economy right, that came out? Or what would I do if we suddenly had a flash crash? Or what would I do if we suddenly had something, right? You don't have to point out the exact news, but you know, how would you take advantage? Is there some, would you take advantage? Would you stand aside? And the reason I say this is because there's been a few times in, in history where there's been very, very one-sided trade. And if you were prepared for that, you could have done very, very well out of it. If you weren't prepared, it looked frightening. 
you know, examples we've had. Uh, we had a Brexit vote. We had when Trump got in. We've had we've had all sorts. We had the, the flash crash. Um, there, there are opportunities out there, and, and and this is you may be like, well, this is not something I'm going to do every day. Of course, it's not. But it's just thinking, hey, you know, if if the market you trade suddenly does something, let's say you're trading USD JPY, great example at the moment, and you know, yeah, uh, BOJ intervened. Are you ready for the intervention? Do you have a trade for that? Do you want to trade that? We know we've had some sort of shudders recently. I get that, but I'm just kind of wanting to think about what is the big opportunity what is something that could be an outlier move and and, and might be that you take advantage it doesn't necessarily mean that you you know risk a huge amount of money or swing for the fences or do anything like that unless you want to but it's it's just thinking clearly you know one something something that might happen regularly or not regularly but more often is you have a big monster trend day that reverses so it's a news driven day big monster trend day reverses it's like a rats in a trap type trade that might be a big opportunity for you. If you see that, very, very rare. If you see that, what do you do? Would you be on that short side in the last hour hitting those lows? Maybe. You know, it's just thinking clearly. So work out your big opportunity and how you take advantage of that. All right, day 15, market study. So just like I mentioned with the NASDAQ there, the turning points, very simple, just observation of the market I like to trade. Oh, it's turned at 6.15, sellers hit it. Back last week, then 6.10, sellers hit it, 6.20, 6 o'clock on the dot yesterday, 5 o'clock today. Okay, interesting. So just stuff like that, just studying your market. It doesn't have to be time of day or anything like that. I just like, that's my thing I like to look at and see if there's any structure there, any algos come in at certain points of time. But you're looking at things like you know, the volume, the patterns. Do you get little pops pre-market on your on the market you trade? If you trade currencies, is the Asian session a wide range and then comes in a London session, follows that? What are the little patterns? You know, if you is, is there some sort of volume pattern, highs and lows times, I talked about those swing lengths. So very often you get a, a kind of a structured swing of, of X pips before it kind of runs out of steam and drops back. There's, we don't need to go into why that happens, but that happens generally because institutional order flow will pay up to a certain amount, then back off. And if that's the only order flow that's adjusting supply, demand and balance, we tend to get those rotations. And so it's tuning into the rotations and the swing lengths. And so you know what's normal what's abnormal and you can adjust to suit. Fundamental drivers, reminding yourself of those, nuances and patterns, little sneaky patterns. Honestly, the amount of people, traders who come and say, yeah, I've noticed this little pattern on this market and it's working really well. Now, what's the pattern? Like, well, actually, you know, if we have a 15 minute drive to the high side above this, we reverse and it's this time of day and then Europe closes in this, then very, then I sell it. You're like, wow, that's such a nuanced pattern. Like, yeah, but it's been working. Like, you carry on. This is the thing, you, when you observe your market and you spend time with the lens on of just studying your market, then other things get revealed to you. And this is the whole point of the exercise, which is studying the market. And, you know, one thing I always say is, you know, when you are studying the market without the burden of performance on your shoulders, because most of the time we look at the market, like, what's the next trade, what's the next trade, what's the next trade? We're looking at it through the lens of how can I make a trade? But when you look at the market and you don't have that, the market's closed or your broker platform's shut down, whatever it is you're not trading, and you're purely observing price, you see things that you don't see when you're looking for a trade. It's a very different lens to look through. And you might say, oh, that's interesting. So it's ignition bar, and I'd normally be taking that. And but it's, it's, it's much, much cleaner, clearer, crisper way to look at things. ADR, your average daily range, ATR, average true range. ADR plays a big part in my strategy. I've shared it many times before. Looking for the average daily range. What is that? Is that increasing when we have that range expansion, contraction? Where do I expect price to go? If I think that's the low, where could price go based on the average daily range? Just little things like that. So studying your market, that's day 15. Okay, let's move on to day 16. So day 16, look at your trade statistics. So a bit more of an, of an overview of what's happened with your trading, your trade performance. Your maximum adverse excursion, maximum favorable excursion. I've said those so many times, but they're so, so useful. And you probably identify some of these already with your exits, your entry analysis, your exit analysis, and your stop analysis. But sometimes just seeing that number and going, oh, you know what? You know, my average take on the winning trades is, you know, let's say 50 pips, but actually maximum favorable excursion is 100. Um, you know, is, is is that average? Is that my average maximum favorable excursion? In which case, and by the way, you know, MFE is how far a trade goes in your favor, the maximum amount before you take a profit. So it moves up 100 pips, comes down close at 50. 100 pips is your maximum favorable excursion, maximum adverse excursion, how far against you the trade went. These are really valuable statistics. Best days, worst days. And this is, a, I think, 
I should have highlighted this to be honest, understanding when your best days occur and when your worst days occur is a real gem. It's a real gem because if you can see, hey, my best days occur on this specific type of day or we have a big gap up or when we've had a big wide range yesterday or after NFP or after FOMC or whatever it may be, you can maybe put more risk capital to that or you take risk capital away on your worst days. Bad habits, good habits, losing day themes, winning day themes, green to red days, come up with new rules to protect your capital. Like, okay, listen, the green to red days really, really trigger you the next day. And we're going off topic slightly here and maybe into psychology a smidge, but important because if it saves a couple of people from doing this, great. Very often if you're up X amount and you go red, there is a tendency to make that worse, but even if you don't, the next days tend to be like claw back, fight back, you trade differently. So it really upsets the apple cart very often doing something like this. And I'm using a very specific example here. I appreciate that. But that green to red, if you're a day trader, can really be detrimental. So maybe you come up with a rule and says, hey, if I'm up thousand bucks, whatever, whatever number it is, hey, I won't give back more than 600 bucks. Or if I'm up, you know, whatever number. So you say, okay, right, fine. Capital protection. So when I'm looking back, I see I've ended the day green regardless. You know, that type of thing. Those are the little things that are well worth putting in place. Because you don't realize, and hopefully you will when you do this analysis and sort of uh, and review, you don't realize how damaging it can be for subsequent performance. Not necessarily the day there, that can be damaging, but it's what happens on the Thursday, the Friday, the week after. If you're doing a Friday, how does that sort of sit with you over the weekend? You come into Monday wanting to get it back and wanting the revenge. You might not actively think it, but you might trade differently. So little things like that. All right. So good for time. Day 17, mindset audit. So last uh, last time we talked about you know, thinking, visualizing the trade you're becoming, having that mental model, rehearsing that mental model, which I think is, you know, it's free, it's super important. And listen, go and go and dig down that rabbit hole yourself and look at all the studies that have been done about visualization. I know other traders do it. You can see it in books. You see sportsmen doing it, athletes doing it, high performers doing it. It's a five minute task. It's, it is tough to do but it's well worth getting into if you can. So review your mindset. How do you think about your trade? How are you feeling? Are you optimistic? Are you bullish about it? Are you frustrated? Um, how many times are you breaking your rules? What are the consequences of breaking those rules? Your general feel about your trading. You know, what are the triggers for bad performance? Is it that red to green? Is it, you know, getting stopped out by a tick and reversing? What is, is there something there that's just, you know, upsets your centered state? Um, you know, do you come in really nervous about your performance? You know, what is it? Just and this is, I come up with multiple multiple examples here, but this is you just sitting down on the seventeenth day here, going right. How do I feel about stuff? You know, what do I know really deep down that I need to sort out? Um, how's my confidence? Yeah, my my confidence isn't great. Okay, well, do I need to work on that? Is that is that holding me back? You know, the Stockdale paradox talked about that so many times. You know, being very very objective and honest about where you are now or being absolutely optimistic about the future and that's so true in trading you could look at your trading now going it's a car crash it's a nightmare our PL looks awful but actually you can stay optimistic and say yeah but if i fix this and then i fix this and then i fix this and then i fix this actually i can probably get to be well on the way to where i want to be so areas that need work so this is a bit more of a you know i'll leave this one up to you you look at it and go hey what do my mindset feel like and just 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 kind of let that talk to you and actually i feel like if you're in the right state for this you haven't got the pressure to trade you haven't got other things on your mind you know I, i've talked i like to you know if after a gym session if i'm in the sauna this is the type of thing where i like to just let these thoughts come to my mind and think well how am i feeling about my trading um you know with my confidence high you know is anything bothering me a little bit here Do I, is there something i need to address that's niggling me that's all a good question like come on you've, you've thought about that so many times now and you've not addressed it why not what do I need to do to address it? Do I need to go back and look at my chart? Do I need to do it? What do I need to do? And just allow that kind of mind to think, because you're a discretionary trader like me, probably are. And so it's super important to care for that brain and understand what that brain is thinking and to allow that brain to have a voice. This sounds well hairy, fairy, and fluffy. I get it. But you're kind of, your subconscious is telling you sometimes, hey, you know what? I, I don't like doing this, but you still force yourself down that road. So just allow that subconscious to have a voice. All right. 
day 18, your goals audits. Okay, so, you know, last was it the first day that we talked about this, so day one, day two, those, those first couple of days, putting your goals down. And for many of you, and thank you for, you know, sending me, uh, you know, your, your comments on this, an easy way to do that is just to reply to one of those daily emails. Armand, who manages the inbox, will will send you know, relevant questions and comments to me, and if I can reply, I definitely definitely will. But some of the things that was was which was nice to hear was many people said that I didn't even have my goals written down, and it was such a good process and cathartic process to go. What do I really want? Do I really want to be? You know, is this what I want? I went into it, you know, with the desire to make some money in trading, but actually. Yes, that that is a that is a thing. But what form do I want to have? A, you know, really jack, jackpot year and push the push the boat out and take a lot of risk, or do I want to kind of slow and steady? It was, it was a, a good process, I think, for a lot of you. So, review your goals and that mind move that visualization process. Are they still accurate? Are you on track? And that might be a bit of a tricky one to do with only you know a couple of weeks in, but just saying, okay, my short term goals. Am I on track to kind of crack this? discipline thing I'm trying to do this may not be a financial goal that you're on track to hit yet two weeks in I get it, it's early days but are you actually making forward progress are you actually improving do you believe it possible because this is one thing that always got me right and if you guys have you know listened to Tony Robbins and those type of people stand in front of the mirror tell yourself this tell yourself that you don't believe it your subconscious goes man I don't believe it I don't believe it so you've got to believe that these goals are possible that's why you kind of chunk them up into smaller goals and say hey that might be a very, very lofty goal for me. And uh, yeah, if I just say that now in front of the mirror, I'll visualize it. I'm probably like, uh, you know, I can't see how I'm going to get there. But actually, when you go, well, really, if I can do this and I can do this and I can do this, that opens up the possibility to do that. Then maybe I don't know how yet, but maybe that maybe helps me increase my size. Maybe that increases my performance. You just kind of say, well, actually, that, that's possible. If things fall into place. I put the work in, then then maybe I'll get there. Do you need me to make any adjustments, any adjustments, any tweaks, any any things that you need to adapt? All right. Day 19, reboot review. So have you stuck the program? I don't know why they didn't put a question mark there, didn't. Uh, what inspired you? Which areas need more work? Where did you move forward the most? What could you double down on? So really the point of this is to, you know, if you did it, all of it, great didn't that's fine as well just some forward momentum with things that resonate with you is, is, is a great way to do it and what i really don't want and i promise you really do not want this is for you to go away and maybe this is why you know we, we have fewer people today than we did last the first time i don't want you to feel bad it's the last thing i want is you to feel bad that you're not doing this every day oh, i didn't do that day. I didn't do that day oh, it means i'm not going to make it work absolutely not no 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 that's not the intention at all far from it it's to give you some ideas and structure of what to look at and how to kind of move forward and what to dig into and what to analyze and what to, you know, what final works for you. You know, I hate that when there's like, you should do this and this and this and this and this. And when you don't do it, you think, well, I've got no chance of making it work. Now, that's not the case at all. There are people out there who are doing it in very, very different ways. It's just purely to give you different ideas and ways to look at things. So what inspired you? Anything that you've looked back and gone, actually, you know what? I got a lot out of doing the stops audit. I get a real good sort of feel for doing the selfie video every day or whatever it might be. Find out the things that really resonate with you. Anything that highlighted that needed more work. You're like, actually, you know what? My stops kind of suck, man. I'm just not that great in my stops. You know, I need to perhaps make that something that needs to be done every week. Maybe I need, every week I need to review my stops or every week I need to review how I'm holding trades. Uh, and what, what made you move forward the most? This is something that sometimes I'm in two minds on. Do you focus really hard on the stuff that's getting you momentum or do you focus on the things that are holding you back i think you have to oscillate between the two not a great answer but let me explain so if you've done something in your trading that's that's helped you move forward made more profitable trades cut your losers earlier and there's something else now and then maybe a discipline issue that upsets the apple cart and, and kind of sets you back a little bit and it's really a struggle for you do you double down with something that's working more to help you move forward or do you try and crack the other nut I think it's be objective and go, well, how debilitating is that? If you're every now and then going on tilt and doing a mini blow up, then yeah, deal with that. If it's something like you break a few rules, you give back a bit of cash, but it's not really that big of a deal, 
then maybe you don't waste more time on it. Maybe you do focus on the stuff that's moving you forward, like getting more size on your better trades or adjusting your stop or finding the favorable conditions or whatever it is. And that more than outdoes the occasional time when you make a mistake and you, you kind of break the rules or whatever it may be. So it's being a bit objective and trading is a little bit like that. It's a bit scrappy. It's a bit grubby. It's not too clear. It's not so clean. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes and you can look back and, you know, even, you know, when you have a great year and traders have great years, look back and go, man, I made some brutal mistakes, but fortunately it all worked out in the wash. And that's really where you need to be with it. You're never going to be perfect with trading. You're always going to make mistakes and trying to be perfect is, is impossible and it's frustrating, but recognizing the big mistakes you do want to eliminate ones that you're okay to live with. And then where can you put the pedal down? To, to kind of pull that momentum and make sure that outdoes all the other little errors and little misdemeanors that come out. And what could you double down on? Number five here, what could you double down on? What work could really help you improve? Um, and it's identifying that. And you know that this is a personal thing. It's like, what helps you move forward the most? Is it just, you know, whatever it is, just identify that and can you double down on that because that's where you get the biggest ROI. Okay. Uh, the final step is day 20. And this is where, you kind of look forward, look ahead and say, right, where do I want to be the next 20 days? Well, I listened to all Mark's stuff and his webinar and looked at all the 20 day steps and oh, it's all very nice and great. Um, but actually, you know, I'm not going to do that every day. It was good. Maybe I did some of it and I did some, some, or maybe I left some of it fine. But what, what bits do I want to take from that and really integrate into my routine? Do I get a lot from the visualization process? Do I get a lot from analyzing my stops? And maybe you then formulate a plan of action that says actually yeah every week i'm going to make sure that i spend you know just 15 minutes on my stops 15 minutes on my entries 15 minutes on my exits 15 minutes on this that's an hour a week i can i can commit to this because i know how useful it's going to be i am going to try and visual, i'm going to write that you know maybe you just pick out the things that work for you and really that's the whole the, the kind of my objective of these two webinars is to say right what are those things that are working for you? And this is, again, this is not strategy. It's not this. It's not that. It's stuff that you do. It's your trade. It's the way you approach things. How can you become the trader that's right for you, discretionary trader, your personality, your time you've got available, your life? That's where the magic happens. Better phrase than that, but you get the idea. That's where things really got to kick into gear. So what do you want to do in the next 20 days? Do you want to kind of do the same thing again? Do you want to do some of it? Just plan it. And this is... Honestly, five minutes it takes you just to jot down, right? Actually, you know, next 20 days, I want to make sure I've done another stop order, make sure I visualize at least four times. And that's where the discipline tracker comes in. That's where that comes in, where you go, right, I want to I'll put my goal in. So next 20 days, you can put, okay, 10 days, I want to visualize. I want to do it non-perfect every day, but I want to do at least 10 days. I want to read five pages of a book, four days. I want to make sure that I've audited my stops at least four times over the next. You, that, that's how, that's why that works. That's why that's four. That's why it's, I'll give it to you to use. So you can go, right, these are the things that are important to me. I can't be perfect. I don't need to do them every day, but I want to do them X times over the next week. I want to do them once a week, whatever it is. And there's a weekly section as well smashing the microphone but you get the idea so that's the idea of the day 20 is really planning your next steps where do you want to be uh, and actually that helps you with 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 um confidence and optimism like okay well if i stick to this for the next 20 days will that eliminate that bad habit i've got will that make me you know, reduce the losers by 10 percent can i hold those winners if i can if i can get make another 10 percent more of my winners by holding it for another five minutes or whatever you've analyzed and, and discovered in that exit audit. Yeah, that, that really would. And and that's what I want you to do is to look at the number you know, with the with other audits and go, that's what that number would look like. If I could chop off that worst loser by implementing that rule. And if I could you know, just stretch my winners by this, that's what the number would look like the PNL number. Ah, that's interesting because that means I haven't got to look for anything crazy, haven't got to discover new strategies, haven't got to do anything massive in terms of habits. But what I have got to do is to just sit and plan and just be very, very careful and cautious about where I'm going to head. All right. So let's talk through the summary. OK, summary, stops audit, entry audit, exit audit, big opportunity your market study, your trade stats, your overall trade stats. How long have we got left? Good. Mindset audit, goals audit, reboot review, 
next steps. Daily tasks, optional daily tasks. I think they're well worth doing. It gets you into a great mindset. And also, and also you you know this as I do. The hack with this isn't necessarily the benefit, which is a benefit, good benefit, five days, five pages of a book, write down your goals, visualize for five, blah, blah. It's the fact that you're doing these every day. And that tells you something. That says, I'm taking this game seriously. I'm separating myself from the pack. I'm separating myself from the mob. I'm doing things that others are doing. There ain't many people out there are reading five pages of training book every day. The only people who are recording a selfie video and doing the discipline tracker, they're not. And so even though they, those might not be yours, create yours, create your daily routine that makes you think, I'm doing stuff that others aren't doing. So I'm going to get the results that others don't. Because that's being frank, that's the nature of the beast in trading. You all see the statistic at the beginning of the slide. That's the retail trader number varies time to time, quarter to quarter, but that's just the, the truth about it. So you can separate yourself from the pack and be in that top 10%, 5%, 1% if you can. Then what is it going to take to do that? And sometimes these little daily tasks, which don't take a lot, it is the separator. Not, this is not, not saying it is these specific things, but sometimes just doing something you know others aren't doing. And off, honestly, guys, many of these things, there are many people auditing their stops just for 30 minutes. There aren't many people who even know when the turning points are in the market. And if that's not if that's you, that's fine. But you can turn yourself into the into the trader who knows that, because then you separate yourself from the pack. Then you get the confidence. You build the confidence. Then other things fall into line. And we know sometimes it's a game of confidence. All right, um, discipline tracker download reminder, and that's really good for that subsequent twenty days. Just put your goals in. Um, maybe we should have better. A screenshot on that but you can, you can download it see for yourself um put your goals in there the number of times you want to do it and then you just check the box and it's and you say right i want to do that 10 times this month i want to do that four times and it just keeps you on the routine actually what it does is say listen i've not done it for the last three days i need to do it at least tomorrow or next day because i want to be back on track it's really useful simple google sheets and you know, it's not complicated but very very handy okay we've got a few minutes for some q a Thank you so much if you're still here. Most of you are. Good. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, we were back probably in two weeks. I'll double check what I decide with the calendar. Um, and I think we're going to cover some strategies uh, to, be, to be confirmed, but there's some strategies that I want to share with you that have been, I think they're pretty good. Um, so maybe that's what we'll cover. Maybe some other stuff as well, but that's what I'm thinking. Um, so these strategies that maybe can be taken into next year and the conditions of next year for a day trading, but we'll see. Um, but keep an eye out from the daily email for that. I'll send you the registration link when we're all set up. And we are ready. Okay, let me pop out these questions. Um, Peter's in the house. Adrian said, how do you manage wash rules and revenge trading after being stopped out? Well, your know, wash rules are very specific to, you know, if you're trading stocks on the New York Stock Exchange or the US exchanges, pretty much irrelevant. If you're trading... Well, I CFD products, spread bet product, UK, Europe, then you don't, know, especially for the indices, it's not a big deal. Uh, you're not going to get caught out in that. That's a very specific question. And really, it does depend on what you're trading, of course. But if you're trading, obviously, Forex, obviously, indices, uh, via CFD, via spread bet, you aren't going to get caught out in that. Very, you know, very, very unlikely. Um, and you've got to be mindful. Another you know, wash rule is that you're not trading the same instrument in and out. And it's kind of supposedly there to stop on savory business but i wouldn't worry about it um depends what you're trading of course i gotta say that i'll be careful here they don't worry about it but it depends what you're trading I think the majority of people who are trading the major indices major markets it's probably not going to affect you um uh, adrian says also said these slides are gold not being cheesy to spawn thank you uh i will get a copy up and on the webinars page that you can download and also put them i know you're a member adrian they'll be in the dashboard for you um uh, Lee says, apologies for being late. Recording will be up, Lee, no problem. Life's life. I get it. Things happen. Uh, okay. Roe said, hey, Mark, did the first 10 days. Amazing. Thank you. Brilliant. Glad you did it, Roe. You, you were in good company. A lot of people did it. A lot of people did. Um, and no one's regretted it. Let me just say, I'm not saying it was the best thing since sliced bed, but no one said, I did the first 10 days and it actually wasted my time. Everyone said it would be great. So maybe someone has and they're not saying it. Uh, you know happens but i think it's been um good anyway the first thing amazing thank you always love your information your tasks help me to adjust my plan i have a question for you while i'm adjusting my plan 
what would you recommend as a day trading time frame? I trade only the open, I trade crude. I trigger on the one minute now. I think if I change to five minute, I would barely get any opportunities during the open, or maybe I should add one more market. How the trade, how the trades happen on the five minute? I feel it's different than one minute, especially if I only have the open. That's such a good question, Rowie. And as is a path that we all stumble across as day traders, what do we do with this? How do we deal with it? So there's a few ways that I think you can deal with it. One is you can say, hmm, actually, do you know what? I'm going to observe on the five minutes to get the feel. Actually, let me backtrack a sec. If you find yourself, here's something, I think this is valuable, Rui, and others maybe. If you find yourself over trading, then consider just going up the time frame a bit. If you find yourself getting sucked in, and be honest about it, look at your uh, look at your trades and observations and go, hey, I get, I'm over trading that first few minutes. And if that's you, the first five is a much better way to get a, a, a handle on what's happening. Just let the algos battle it out. Watch for five minutes. Let that five-minute candle form. And then if you feel like there's a trade, let's say you want to trade that only range breakout momentum trade. There's a big, decent extension on the first five minutes. Then maybe you drop down to a one. So you're not getting seduced by the one-minute oscillations and the flashing lights and the candles and all this type of stuff and the choppiness and the grubbiness of the candles that can happen in one minute. You're seeing things, yes, they're slower, but it's allowing you to be a little bit more considered and careful about do you even want to trade the opening range breakout? Do you want to fade another push? How do you want to position? And then timing that entry with a one minute, because then you can see that one minute, you can see the little micro structure and you can see up to five candles for every one on the five. So that's that's something, something to consider. Um, a three minute is, is actually not a bad play, not a bad candle to look at. I know a lot of traders look at three minute. Obviously, it's almost the middle of ground between the one and the five. You've got to toss up between not getting sucked in. If you can watch the one minute not get sucked in and overly um, seduced by the action, then great, you carry on. But if you feel like you're, uh, you know, you're getting sucked into trades that aren't really there because it's the one minute, peel back to the five, observe the five, and then when you're ready to pull the trigger, go down to the one. Try that out for a bit, run with it for a bit, see what the performance results are like. By the way, the daily email was good. Thank you, Rui. Um, and Mark has put, thanks, Mark. It's been a great support and I'm already keeping to it. Notice some changes. We'll do it to the end. Thank you, Mark. Good. I'm glad that you're doing it. I get, you know, when I put these webinars together, I think you know, this stuff's helped me so much. I've seen it helped others. And if it helps you, that's great. If you if you, you write to me in one month, two months, three months, six months and go, and I've had those before. I stuck to this. I listened to the webinar ages ago. I did this, did that. And actually it's really falling into place. It's like, great. We're all that's what the trading community should be, helping each other move forward, move to the next station, move to the next level, push up. Those that want it will will, will do the work. And and by the way, like I said, I, I don't claim to, to know everything far from it, but I try and share what I think is valuable for you guys. So thank you for that feedback, Mark. Thank you, Lee. Um, AJ's put, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, a little bit further up the ladder. Sorry for the wash rule question. It cannot... Imagine the relief you bought after a year. I know you've just joined us, Adrian. I know you were struggling with your trading. You joined Traders Mastermind as a member. Um, you've been on the calls. You've had some conversations with the group. And yeah, we, you've got your head in the right place now. You're refocused. You struggled a little bit. Hopefully, you're back on on track. Uh, you're definitely in good company. Um, these, sections, uh, these sessions are great. Um, can you put the URL for the webinars page on the screen? I think it's, if you go to tradersmastermind.com, if you just Google Traders Mastermind, pretty pretty up there with number one, I think. And then on the top right in the nav bar, you go to the webinars. I think it's another learn. I think it's put it under learn and webinars, but I think it's forward slash webinars. But if you go to Traders Mastermind, tradersmastermind.com, all one word, and then navigate, you'll find the webinars page. And this one will be up as soon as it's kind of processed and what have you. But all the past ones are up there as well. Hopefully that helps you out. Um, oh, next question, Varuna. Um, do you know of any resources to help with the visualization processes? Um, do you know what? There's a few things online. This it's, it's kind of jiggle around and there's some stuff that's not really related to trading and what have you. Um, there's a guy, Ed Milet, who's done some really good stuff. Um, he's a peak performance coach, not necessarily exclusively on visualization. If I can find it and maybe I'll send it out on a daily email, actually, it's a really good idea. Um, but one of the things he said, some things that I picked up is you know, to make it as clear as possible, to make it bright, to make it, um, to feel the emotion you feel when you when you see that in your mind. So one thing I did, you know, many many years ago was was use it to kind of combat 
um, a habit that I had in trading, which was over trading, trading too much size. And I imagine myself in the position about to pull the trigger, frustrated, and then I wouldn't. And I kind of replay that and replay what I wanted to do. So it's sort of different from the from the goal setting visualization, but making it bright. Um, one thing I've heard is I kind of tried this, didn't really work so much for me, is to you know, you you visualize what you're you're looking at and you kind of flip it around in your mind. You flip it around, you look at it from different angles. If it's a sort of still image, whatever that image might be, I flip it around, look at it from different angles, and you make it black and white, and then you bring it into full color. So I think these are really just ways of making you believe that it, your subconscious believe that it's real. If you can get the emotion attached to it, that seems to be the general consensus of how it becomes effective. Attach the emotion to it, feel that emotion to it, whether it's negative and then you want to switch it to positive or whether you just want to get that positive emotion and see yourself in that position. I think that's that's really, really, really key. Um, but Steve, I don't know if you're a Vruna, if you remember, uh, if you remember on the members dashboard, if you scroll down the left-hand side, special guest, we've had Steve Ward on multiple times to talk to the group, talk to the traders. We've actually got a visualization process that he did. We stripped out the audio only so you can listen to audio only headphones. He does a visualization process there. I'm not sure if you remember or not, but that's there if you are. Um, Mark says, first 10 days, good foundation to build on. Good. Uh, Rowey, I don't overtrade. I do three a day max. I stick to it. Good for you, Rowey. But I get it, yes. <laughs> okay, good for you, Rowey. Uh, thanks for helping us. Uh, appreciate that, Lee. Got it. Thanks. Um, visualization, highly recommend. Peak performance, investing, and trading Bruce Bauer. Okay, thank you for that, Adrian. Put that, stick that. I'll, um, yeah, I'll, I love stuff like this. I love looking into things like this. So, yeah, good for that. Peak performance and investing and trading Bruce Bauer. There's a couple of, um, and also, if you're a bit skeptical on this, and we're traders, skeptical, get it. There's some studies that have been done, and the biggest study was the free throw study. And I'm going to butcher this, so go and check it out for the actual proper stats. But they kind of had, a, I believe it was basketball, free throw. They had people, three groups, uh, or was it four? Three groups. One just practicing the free throw. Yeah, it was four because they had a control group. One practicing the free throw. So in basketball, we get free throw, right? Free throw, practicing that foul free throw, practicing, practicing, practicing. Another group just visualize it. Then another group visualize it and practice it. And then another group do nothing. And that's that's important, that control group. And again, I might be getting this slightly wrong, but this is the gist of it. And the study showed that obviously the control group did nothing, didn't improve. The people who practiced for this period of time improved. The people who visualized, just visualized, also improved. The people who visualized and practiced got the biggest improvements. They were kind of getting more reps in their brain, uh, actually doing the physical thing, and they were visualizing actually shooting the hoop, shooting the hoop, the, the motions, the feelings, this type of stuff, visualizing the muscle movements and what have you. So, you know, there's loads of studies out there that prove that it's effective, and it, it feels odd at first, and maybe we'll do some sort of more in-depth stuff about this, but it does feel odd at first. Um, but once you get into it, it's actually quite an enjoyable thing to do. Uh, thank you, Mark. Two sessions for pure goal. Appreciate that, Helena and Varuna. Says brilliant. Yes, I'm a member. Check out. Yeah, Varuna, you're a member. Good. Members dashboard. Scroll down. Special guests. The visualization by Steve Ward. Okay, we'll call it an evening there. Thank you so much, ladies and gents. I'm glad you enjoyed this one, and we should be back again in a couple of weeks, probably. But keep an eye out for that uh, in the daily email. And I say the webinar recording will be up. Traders Mastermind. I think it's forward slash webinars, but it's on the top right there anyway. Right. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, appreciate you all. Take care. Bye-bye for now.